Okay, welcome to this talk about microprofile, uh, new and uh, noteworthy. So while they, while they switch over to my screen here, I have stickers, I have uh, uh, tattoos. So uh, if you ask questions, uh, you get a sticker or a tattoo or both. So don't be shy and, and come up here and talk to me afterwards and I'll have, have two kinds of stickers and, and, and lots of tattoos. So uh, please, please do. Uh, what I will talk about today is microprofile. And uh, before I do that, uh, I'll just introduce myself. Uh, I'm a Java champion. Uh, I'm in the uh, Java community process in the executive committee there. Uh, I'm in the spec lead for the MVC specification. And uh, I also served in the expert group for the security specification for Java E8. Uh, I'm also a, dream a NetBeans Dream Team member, and I run uh, the local uh, Java user group in Malmo in Sweden. As well as uh, just recently, I am also joined the uh, Eclipse Enterprise for Java uh, PMC, and actually serving as the PMC lead now for the first three months before we roll it around to the next person taking over. And my day job is as a uh, consultant at Cybercom in Sweden. So the topics today are, first, I'll just very quickly go through microservices packaging and, and uh, profiles. Uh, then I'll, I'll introduce microprofile and go through uh, what microprofile is and what's uh, been uh, delivered in the, in the uh, last couple of years for that. And of course, I'll show a lot of demos and samples as we go. So first off, microservices. Everybody is talking about microservices. It's all around us, and uh, I won't dive deeply into that. But what we're trying to do with the microservices is to solve the problem of the monolithic architecture. And there is actually nothing wrong with a monolithic architecture. And uh, it, it may be perfectly well suited for your particular case. But it has one major deficiency, and that is the entire system is treated as one unit. That means that if you do a change to one of the, the modules in your system, you will need to redeploy the entire thing. And this may be time consuming, it may be costly, uh, or uh, not well suited for, for uh, everything. So that's the major thing. If something changes, you package and deploy the entire thing. So as opposed to a microservice-based architecture, you d uh, divide your application into services, uh, and you have uh, uh, services calling each other. In this particular case, I have an application, which also may be a, a service, that calls uh, the services A, B, and C. And, and the services individually execute their business logic. And microservices may also be uh, have lots of layers and data sources and be complex in itself just as a monolith. It's just that they serve one business domain or one small piece of functionality. Uh, so it's uh, faster to deploy and it doesn't affect the entire system even if you change the data source of one of the services because you've divided it up uh, individually. So, and I guess that there are so many talks about Microsoft's going around, so I won't uh, dwell about that. Uh, what I talk about next is a little bit about packaging of microservices. And what's recently been uh, uh, the, the most popular approach of packaging microservices is the Uber jar or the fat jar approach. And by that I mean you should be able to run your service by uh, typing java dash jar your service. So if we look at what this actually implies is that uh, since we're in the Java uh, world, we are uh, running on the JVM, and the JVM run, uh, needs to run on some kind of operating system. It may be virtual or, or, or uh, anything, and it runs on some kind of hardware, which also may be a virtual machine. But it's still, you need this kind of stack that you have some hardware, some operating system, and the JVM, and then your application runs on top of that. And this is uh, the Uber jar approach. This jar or the application contains everything this application needs to be able to run. So the, the, the other way of doing this is the uh, thin war approach, uh, where you uh, introduce a layer in between. You still have the hardware, the operating system, the JVM, but you add a layer of the uh, Java uh, application server or the Java E container. 
and, and you deploy your application into that uh, container. And this container adds support for uh, scalability, transaction security, uh, persistence, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, so you don't package this into your application. You just rely on it being there. So they, the, if we put these side by side, you see the, the, uh, the uh, Uberchar approach, uh, you just run on the JVM, and the thin war approach is that you run uh, within a Java E container. And when you deploy this stuff or run this stuff uh, with the Uberchar approach, you, you, you would type java dash jar, uh, jar uh, uh, and for the uh, application server, you would need some kind of deployment mechanism that is probably going to be different from which vendor you've chosen. So I'll come back to this picture later. Now I'll, I'll move on to why do we even talk about microprofile? Well, the reason we talk about microprofile is Java E8, or actually what was going on with Java E8 uh, in, in 2016. It's, it's, it's a bit uh, late in game, but there was, was a period of time where Java E8 seemed uh, to be lacking the progress we wanted it to have. And out of this, uh, two initiatives came out. We have the MicroProfile Initiative and the Java E Guardians. And uh, th these two initiatives shows how, which, uh, how strong this community is. When, when things weren't progressing as we wanted, the community reacted. And, and the, the, the goals of these two initiatives are the same. It's to move Java E forward. And, and uh, Reza here is the, uh, behind the, the Java E Guardians. Uh, and he can talk a lot about that later, I guess. Uh, I'll talk about MicroProfile here today. But the goal of these uh, two initiatives are the same. It's to move the platform forward and have a vibrant community around it. So uh, MicroProfile. Uh, we looked a little bit of packaging and uh, the fact that we want to run thing from the command line uh, typing java jar. Uh, so let's uh, look at what microprofile brings to this table. First of all, microprofile.io is the place to start. Uh, the emphasis here is on contribution. You can join the mailing list and everybody is equal. You can just uh, pitch in and, and uh, discuss whatever topic you want to do. Or, or what you want to have uh, implemented in MicroProfile later, this is uh, the starting point. MicroProfile.io, well, I'll repeat that link at the end of my presentation. Uh, after a while, uh, MicroProfile moved to Eclipse. So it's officially called Eclipse MicroProfile. And you can also find it here on Eclipse. It's still on GitHub, it's still a patch to license, uh, but it has a, a home at the Eclipse Foundation. So one step back, uh, we're talking about microprofile. And to be able to talk about microprofile, we need to know what profiles are. And uh, let's dive into this a little bit. Uh, we've actually had profiles in Java E uh, for, for uh, quite a while, actually since Java E6. Uh, we have had the web profile and the full profile. And in Java E, the, the web profile is a subset of the full profile. And the first version of microprofile uh, is actually also a subset of web profile. It's not an official profile, but it, it relies on exactly the same technologies that are provided by the uh, Java E full platform. And wh uh, what comes with microprofile is uh, JAXRS, CDI, and JSONP. And this is kind of the minimum of, of uh, amount of technologies you need to be, uh, be able to create a simple microservice. If you need something more than that, uh, you can look at the web profile, which adds uh, uh, Stuff like uh, servlets, uh, EJBs, uh, JPA, uh, also some web frameworks, and, and beam validation, for example. And uh, you can go even uh, bigger to go to the full profile, which adds more enterprise kind of technologies, if you need that. So that was kind of the, the, the status of microprofile 1.0. That's JAXRS, CDI, and JSONP. And, and this was launched in September 2016. This is a, a bit more than a year ago. And when you launch a specification, uh, it, it actually hasn't got any value before you add any implementation to it. And uh, if you remember in, in Java EE, uh, when a new version is launched, Glassfish is the reference implementation as launched more or less the same day. 
and and uh, then it, it will take a an amount of time before the next release comes around. Uh, Java E7 was launched in uh, June uh, 2013, and uh, uh, it took like eight months or something before you had the first uh, uh, implementation out there, which was Wildfly, if I remember correctly. So, so, so it takes some time to get the implementation out. The difference with uh, MicroProfile, and, uh, and especially since it's just a subset of existing stuff, uh, from day one you had four implementations, and after that uh, even a, a fifth one has added uh, to the game. And the first four was Wildfly Swarm, Web Store Liberty, Apache Tommy, and Payara. And then we also have Cumulus E, which has, uh, are implementing uh, a lot of the, the microprofile stuff. So that's about the introduction. So uh, let's dive in and uh, uh, look at some of the, the, the code. So first of all, uh, if you want to get started, this is the page to start. It's uh, the microprofile uh, web page. Uh, join the discussion. Uh, uh, and, and uh, get started there. Uh, the the uh, different implementation, I show a couple of them. Some of them have, uh, uh, anybody familiar with Spring Boot here? Yes? Uh, do you use the Spring Spring.io accelerator to create like projects? Like you can go into web page, uh, 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 select some stuff and generate the project and get started. Well, MicroProfile actually has the same thing. You can go into the Wildfly Swarm project generator, uh, type in your, your name of your project here, uh, and, and just start typing microprofile and uh, generate project. So it's one click, unzip, and run. And you have a microprofile project up and running. Uh, Reddit is not the only one. Uh, IBM has also created a, a accelerator. So you can go into the Liberty WebEx uh, accelerator, click on microprofile, give it a name, generate, unzip, run. So it's that fast. Uh, Cumulus also has the same kind of thing. Just generate, choose microprofile. Here you have actually support for much more than microprofile. Generate POM and you're up and running. So it's extremely fast to, to, to get started with a microprofile project. I won't do that now. I don't rely on, on the internet. So uh, what I'll do is to show what you get when you run these kind of things. So let's start with, with the swarm. So, so this is uh, uh, microprofile 1.0. So, so you have a, a dependency called uh, microprofile, and uh, it's version 1.0, and then I can add uh, swarm fractions to it. And Volta Swarm works in that way that you, you just add what kind of bits and pieces of Wildfly you need uh, to be able to run, and, and it builds a Uber jar for you yeah, using the uh, Wildfly Swarm pl plugin. So this is extremely easy to, to, to do. It's just go in there. Uh, let's see if I remember correctly. Duke's Swarm. Uh, it's Maven clean package. Oh, maybe type it right as well. There you go. And uh, this one will, will build a Uber jar with uh, everything I need to get uh, able to run this uh, simple application. And the application is uh, ex extremely simple. It's just a hello service saying uh, hello world from Wildfly Swarm. So it's just a JaxRS application. There's nothing to it. But the, the interesting thing is that I can actually uh, run it from command line. So I can run java-jar uh, dix swarm jar, like this. And, and I fire up uh, uh, Wildfly, uh, or the bits and pieces of Wildfly that it is needed for this kind of uh, simple application to run. And it's up and running, so it's pretty fast. So uh, then I can access it to uh, localhost. Duke Swarm, and it says uh, hello from uh, Wildfly Swarm. So it's, it's, it's uh, general pom unzip run. 
or a Maven package in between. Uh, the, the other implementations are uh, pretty similar. Let's look at the, the, uh, what you get when you uh, use the Cumulus. It, it's the same thing. You, you get a, a uh, uh, generated POM with, here you have the, the uh, uh, Cumulus uh, microprofile uh, and, and their dependency. Uh, it, it contains the same as the IO microprofile, but th this is their way of doing it. And you run it with their Cumulus uh, Maven plugin. So it's exactly the same, it's just move Maven package and run. And this one is, is actually pretty interesting because all the other implementations are well-known Java EE servers. Like you have Tommy, you have Pyara, uh, Wildfly, and, and uh, uh, Liberty. But this one is, uh, is something new. What do you see here? Maven package. The, the, the code is exactly the same, it's just hello from, from Kubernetes. So this one also builds a, 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 a Uber jar for me. And this one, uh, as you see, actually starts up uh, Jetty. So this is built on Jetty. So it, it kind of adds enterprise supports or drags in whatever you need to run uh, a microprofile and uh, runs it all on uh, Eclipse Jetty. And this one will also uh, run localhost 8080. I think this one runs on, on root, actually. Let's see. There we go, from Cumulus. So, so, so it's, it's extremely uh, fast and easy to get up and running, and uh, they are pretty similar in the way they do it. Cumulus and, and, and Swarm has their, uh, their uh, Maven plugin, which you just add which fractions you want to run uh, with it to build your uh, project. The uh, Pyara Falls has a little bit different approach. Uh, here uh, they have a a, a uh, the the micro profile is itself a jar file. So this jar file takes a input of a, uh, a uh, as a war file. So you generate your project as a war. So 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 uh, as opposed to to the others, uh, it's a jar. Here you have a war file uh, which you generate uh, and has a, as an input to the, the uh, jar file, and then you can use a standard Maven plugin to just uh, create a Uber jar that contains your executable jar with the war file as an input, uh, like I've, I've done here. So, so uh, and, and this one runs exactly the same way as the others. Uh, it's, uh, let's see. it's Pyara. Uh, it's also just Maven clean package. So, and, and it creates a, a uh, Uber jar that contains the uh, the um, uh, Pyro micro jar and and the WAR file uh, uh, as an input to the the uh, executable there. So, no jar target Dix uh, jar. There we go. And, and this one starts up Pyara, and Pyara is the commercial supported version of Glassfish. So, so it's, um, it's, it's based, based on Glassfish, a fork from, from there. And, and this one also starts uh, pretty much uh, the, the uh, same amount of time as the others, and, and it says uh, hello from Pyara Micro. So, so these are, are different ways of, of doing it. The, the, uh, the last one is uh, Apache Tommy. Uh, they have a also a little bit uh, about the same approach. They have a, a, a plugin you can use to, to create an executable jar, the, uh, the uh, OpenEGB uh, Maven plugin. Uh, and uh, you just say which, which version of Otomi do, do you want to run with. Uh, apart from that, it's, it's exactly the same. You add the microprofile as a dependency. So let's go there, stop this one. Clean package. Here you have to, uh, uh, since I've been lazy creating this POM file, I have to 
uh, say Tommy exactly as well to, to activate that plugin. And Java just jar uh, target it. Looks Tommy exact jar. And then from startup uh, Apache Tommy, which is uh, each, uh, Java is support built on top of to uh, Tomcat. And and this one also uh, does what you'd expect it to do. Looks Tommy. There you go. Hello from Tommy. So so this is micro profile uh, uh, one to zero. So let's just. Uh, jump back to the slides for a second and uh, uh, go on to, to later versions of uh, MicroProfile. So, uh, if we look at, at uh, what we've done here, for Websphere, we had these, uh, the Websphere Liberty uh, plugin. Uh, we get an UberJar deployable war out of it. For uh, Payara, uh, uh, you have the the micro profile jar, uh, and and uh, uh, can use any Maven executable uh, plugin to just create an Uber jar or a deployable war. For Swarm, uh, you have the the Swarm fractions you add to it, and and uh, uh, you actually can get a deployable war or Uber jar out of it if you want that. Uh, and uh, Tommy is um, uh, exactly the same. You just create a war file, uh, activate the Tommy Maven plugin. And you get a UberJar deployable war out of it. For for Cumulus, uh, they uh, have the Cumulus Maven plugin you add to to the picture, and you get an UberJar out of it. They don't. Uh, you can probably get a war file as well, but but that's uh, not what they've done with their plugin. So that kind of that's one year ago. Like this was uh, one to zero. So now we're uh, going to look at uh, a little bit more current things, and uh, that is MicroProfile 1.1. That was launched uh, this summer, and it, it uh, microfile one hundred one is is microfile one hundred zero plus configuration, and uh, configuration for microfile uh, works uh, in this way uh, default. Uh, you have the if you add system properties to your your uh, uh, application, it will use these. If you add environment properties. It will use these unless uh, there are system properties available. And I if none of these are available, it will use, a uh, by default, a microprofile config properties file, which is inside your application. And the, the one on the bottom makes sense in your development environment. You're in your IDE and just running your stuff. It makes sense to package your properties with your application. If you're, you're uh, Packaging into a, a Docker, for example, it makes sense to give it some environment variables in the Docker container. Or if you're running it from, from, from uh, uh, the command line with Java dash jar, it makes sense to just give it uh, dash D some properties into the, the application. And you can have d different configurations for different uh, environments. So, so that's how it works. You can also plug in uh, configuration sources that overrides these again. So, so you can uh, choose which kind of configuration sources uh, uh, you want to add to your application. These are the ones you get for free uh, by default. So for MicroProfile 1.0, uh, this is how your dependency looks like in, in, in your Maven POM. For uh, 1.1, now it's moved to Eclipse, so it's org Eclipse MicroProfile. And you have a MicroProfile BOM version 1.1.0, which is uh, the, the, the version number. So that's what you need to change to, to have the APIs available for you uh, in your development environment. So let's, let's take a look at some of the code. So for configuration, I will um, use uh, Wildfly uh, Swarm as a demo. First, I'll just show you the, the configuration stuff here. It's, uh, it has the, the uh, microprofile 110, and I add the, the uh, uh, microprofile uh, dependencies. Here I actually have the, the uh, I think this is 10 of microprofile, and I add the uh, configuration capabilities. If I have the one at one uh, fraction of uh, microprofile, I wouldn't need to add the, the other fraction. But 
uh, here it's, it's, um, it's, it's what I did here. And I also have the, the Swarm plugin just as uh, I used to do. You can also run it in Docker if you want it. So this is how you want, uh, uh, typically would do that. If you run it in Wildfly, uh, you need to add some, some implementation of it. And you can use the, the uh, reference implementation, which is the Geronimo config if you want to do that. But what I'll do now is to show the, the command line version. And in my code, if I want to configure this one, uh, say that uh, uh, it's not good enough to say hello world anymore. Uh, I want to say hello and, and be able to configure who I'm saying hello to. So what I do here is that I inject a config property. And the config property is coming from the microprofile config. And what I can say here is the name of the property is going to be place. And it's going to have a default val value world. So if I don't configure anything, it's still going to have a default value. Otherwise, I would have a runtime exception when I started here. And that may be the cause that you want to have that. In some cases, you need to have a configuration and you don't want to have a default configuration. And then you want to be told when you start up the application. Then you don't give it the starter value. Oh, it, a default value. So, and what I do here is just to write the hello and, and use the place I get from my configuration source. And if I run this one uh, directly without any configuration, it will uh, write out uh, uh, hello world. So let's just, just make sure it does that. I'll go here. Configure deck and clean package. So there, if I now run this one, Java dash jar target uh, configure duke uh, swarm, uh, it will start a wildfly. You'll see here in yellow that the, the config is uh, enabled uh, and it uh, starts up wildfly. And if I run it here on 8080 configure duke, it says hello world. And that's expected, that's the default value, right? So say that I want to give it a uh, some application uh, uh, internal uh, configuration to, to be able to run it in my development environment. So I just stop it here and uh, I go into my project and I see in uh, source main resources, meta inf, I add a, a, um, a configuration file called microprofile config properties and I add uh, a configuration which I say is uh, Java Day. So now it's going to look up this file and, and use that one, right? So what I need to do is just uh, to compile it again. There you go. And then I uh, uh, just run it. And uh, when it started up, I should be able to uh, see that it's saying, hello, Java Day. So now it's using the, the configuration internally in the application. But that doesn't make sense if I want to move it to uh, a, a another environment, say the, the production environment, for example. Uh, th then I, I want to give it, for example, and say, I, I don't rebuild it because it's already built. I've tested it in my environment. And what I want to do is to move it to, to a test environment or uh, maybe a production environment. So I just add the system properties and say, place is key. And I uh, just run it again with the system property. And what this one will do now is to read up the system property. I could also give it an environment property in a Docker container or in my computer, but as you see, it, th this is the way uh, it works. If I give it another uh, tr track f uh, four, it will t write track four. So th that's how configuration works. It's really simple. It's the 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 uh, the uh, at config properties, all you do is just inject and you have the properties up and running. So that was microprofile 1.1. And now we're uh, going even further to microprofile 1.2. 
2. And uh, this was launched in end of September this year. Uh, and it was actually launched at Java 1. We're standing, there, when they were public, uh, publicizing this on the blog, they did it from the exhibition hall at Java 1 uh, and, and launched uh, MicroProfile uh, 1 and 2. And this is, uh, this brings more goodies for micro, uh, microservices. Uh, right, we have the, the, the uh, config. Uh, it's been upgraded a little bit, so we have config 1.1. Uh, but it's just uh, some minor tweaks. And it's added some stuff that is really useful for microservices, such as uh, health check, metrics, fault tolerance, and, and JOT propagation. And, and it also has the, the existing uh, CDI, JSONB, and JAXRES uh, from MicroProfile 100. And uh, this one, if you have the, the, uh, the uh, uh, 101 configuring your project, the only thing you need to do is to uh, uh, bump it up to 102. And also, the artifact ID has changed from dash bomb to just microprofile. I'm, I'm not sure why they d continue changing this, but this is kind of an evolving thing. So, so maybe after a while, uh, it will be more standardized, but this is a good thing. It just gets better and better. So, so uh, this is how you would uh, use uh, microprofile uh, one or two. And let's uh, look at some of them. Uh, I'll demo uh, the health, the metrics, the fault, and the fault tolerance uh, APIs. So let's stop this one and go to the healthy duke. And in, in the healthy duke, uh, I have, uh, let me just check here. Let's go there. I updated this demo this morning, so I just have to check that everything is here. So, uh, wh what you have in, uh, here I have a, a, a uh, th this one I'll, I'll run in, in uh, Web Store Liberty. I didn't show that in, in uh, one zero, and uh, that's because I'm, I'm going to show it here uh, now. Uh, all these demos will be running in, uh, in Liberty, uh, but you can run it in, in all of the implementations. But what I've done here is I have the uh, MicroProfile 1.2. Uh, uh, dependency, and I have the the uh, uh, the uh, this is just standard stuff, and then I have the Liberty Maven plugin to create my uh, Uber jar based on uh, IBM uh, Liberty or Open Liberty as it's called now, and uh, I just I'm, I'm running the uh, the uh, runnable profile. I just removed everything else. You uh, when you generate this project from from IBM, you get a uh, a possibility to create a runnable jar to deploy, deploy it locally on, on uh, Liberty on your computer or in Cloud Mix. So everything is, is, is there, or oh, Bluemix is, is called. So, so uh, Cloud Mix is a better name, actually. <laughs> so uh, for, to, to get the health stuff up and running, what you need to do in, in Liberty, you need to activate it. And that is uh, really easy for, for uh, Liberty. It's just to add the uh, MicroProfile 1 or 2. It will give you everything there. You can also uh, take each and, and uh, one of these services individually, but, but um, uh, Liberty has built up that you, you activate these features. And here I activate the entire microprofile one at you. And then I, I somewhere in my, uh, my code, I need an application scopes uh, uh, a class that implements the health check. And there is one method uh, I override here. Uh, which uh, returns a health check response. And this is a pretty cool uh, API. I, I can do uh, whatever I want. I can say my service is up and do or down, or I can calculate this based on something. If, if I want to say that my service is down because some other third-party services are down, then I can just set it to down. So, and, and I can add uh, whatever um, uh, data I, I want to add with the flu Fluent API here. So I've just, for, for example purposes, added uh, Duke Rocks. So what happens here is that when I uh, build this one, I use the runnable profile for, for Liberty. And 
then if I run this one, you know, just our target uh, healthy duke. And the, this is actually the coolest part in, in, in the demo, uh, if my computer wasn't as slow, but this is running WebSphere on my local computer and it's up and running now. So if you've ever uh, been working with WebSphere before, this is uh, the new way of running WebSphere. It's a, a Java Just Jar, and here you can see all the stuff that is uh, activated from MicroProfile uh, 1 and 2. I have the fault tolerance, the, the, uh, the health, uh, the configuration, and et cetera, et cetera. So what's interesting here is that since I've uh, activated MicroProfile, and uh, I, by automatically get these services available, like the dash health. And, and since I also have implemented this class in my, my application, my health implementation will, will be uh, activated. So if I go and activate this, it's on local host 9080 slash health. You can see it says Duke rocks and it's up. And this is the stuff I configured in, in my application. So, so uh, if, if I disable this, I will get the default health uh, stuff that just says state up, which is the, the, what they would do if you don't uh, implement it yourself. I also, for free here, get the uh, metrics. And this one says uh, you, ha you have to go to HTTPS, and I don't have any certificates here, so let's see. And this is what I get for free from... from um, running this, it's all uh, whatever stuff that IBM has decided to, to make available for me. And if I reload this page, uh, stuff here will, will uh, update. So this is the, the CPU load. Uh, it's taken from my computer right now. So by default, by just having MicroProfile on, activated on, on Liberty, I get this for free. And this is like goodies for operations people. They, they can play around with this and see how much CPU you're using and, and other stuff uh, y you can get uh, uh, from a server. So this was actually a demo of both the health and the metrics. So the last one I'll demo is the fault tolerance. And that is a bit harder to demo, but I'll give it a try. Uh, this is called Tolerant Duke. And the Tolerant Duke is, let me see, where there it is. This one also runs on uh, Liberty. And here I have the, do 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 do. I have a uh, rest endpoint. And, and what I have here is, uh, I have a circuit breaker enabled. And this one says that uh, it's going to wait one second. Uh, and and it's, it's going to take uh, three failures to hit this before it, it breaks the circuit. And after that, it's, it's going to uh, uh, wait. F it, it, it if the timeout of three seconds Occur occurs three times, it's going to wait one second before it, uh, it, it, it uh, actually uh, lets it go through. So what I've done here is I have a, a counter that, s that sleeps for 10 seconds just to make sure that we're interrupted and, and then says hello from, from Liberty. So what, what, to, to demo this, I have to very quickly in my browser hit refresh in, in, in four tabs, right? So I'll get the first three is going to wait for Three seconds and then timeout, and the fourth one is going to hit the circuit breaker. And I also have a fallback error. I'll demo that later. I comment that out, uh, and um, go in here and build it. And I'll open a couple of browsers here. It's going to be localhost uh, 9080. Tolerant Duke, circuit hello there. And I'm going to copy this there. OK, how many do I have now? I have, so I have it here. So now, now I'll start it. Uh, Java just jar target tolerant 
duck. Just make sure it's running. There, it's up and running. So now I'm gonna gonna hit all these tabs uh, once in a row and just quickly, and then we go back and see what happens with them. So uh, go there, go there, three and four. So what we'll see here after ten seconds, this one says timed out, right? And that's kind of what what we expected because it says wait three seconds, but it actually waited for ten. So this one ties times out. The second one is going to be exactly the same. I'm switching tabs here. And the third one is going to be exactly the same. But the third one gets another exception. Because here, the circuit breaker has, has hit, right? So I, I hit it three times. I get uh, It waits for three seconds. I get a timeout. The first one gets an exception directly because the circuit breaker is off. If I now hit uh, refresh on this one, it's going to say hello four because it's been hit four times. Right? So, but these exceptions are, are cool if you're uh, implementing a JAXRS client against your, your uh, services and you can catch the exceptions and do stuff in, in Java code. But here, um, uh, you may want to do uh, uh, so, some uh, uh, fallback handling, for example. So, let, let's say that I, in my, my uh, REST resource, say that I have a fallback and a fallback handler. It's kind of like the exception mapper mechanism in JAX-RS, right? So I say, if something happens that makes this method not able to be called, the fallback handler is going to take it. And the fallback handler, in this case, is, is just saying, hey, I'm sorry, can't count. So if the circuit breaker hit, this is what you're going to get. So I've enabled that one. I'll just rebuild the application. And run it again. I'll just make the stuff here ready so I can hit it fast. Three. Four. You see, is it up and running? Yes. So if I now run this one, run this one, run this one, and run this one, see, the first one says, hey, I'm sorry, I can't count because it timed out, right? The uh, second one says, it timed out after three seconds, and this one, and this one. But if I, I go to the fourth one, it, it's going to be up and running. So, so th this is a, a circuit breaker mechanism uh, uh, with a fallback handler, and, and it's uh, pretty easy to to uh, uh, to, to uh, implement. It's it's uh, the, the the annotation here is kind of complex with uh, a, a lot of stuff going on, but uh, you can figure it out more or less, uh, and you can set the values here. Uh, whatever you want. You set a timeout. This is uh, how long I'm allowing this method to take. Uh, everything over three seconds, do something else. And the circuit breaker handles that, uh, the different kinds of exceptions, and you can have a follow back handler handle that stuff. So. So if, if we look at back at the uh, packaging stuff, if you remember this one, uh, uh, you said you have the, the Java Dash jar, uh, uh, Dux jar on the Uber jar approach, and you have the deploy Dux something script on your thin war. Um, if you uh, replace this stuff with um, uh, the, the uh, microprofile container, so, no, so now it's a microprofile container and not a Java e container, it's still the same thing. You have the, the Java Dash jar for the Uber jar, and you can also run a microprofile container uh, and, and deploy your application into it uh, if you don't package this as an Uber jar. So, so you have these kind of, of things. You have the, the, uh, the Java Dash jar standard approach for the Uber jar, and you have some proprietary deployment scripts for your uh, other applications. So how are we going to get around that? Well, we have Docker, and Docker helps us with that. And this talk is not about Docker. I'm just showing here that it, it uh, will help us do this stuff, because Docker adds a um, uh, a, a, a container around my application with the stuff it needs uh, to be able to run. So, seen from outside of Docker, 
uh, it doesn't matter what you have put into your container. It just, you have the same uh, command lines for, for handling it, like Docker Run, or you can use Kubernetes or whatever uh, 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 container orchestration system you choose to use. But from the outside, it's the same. It doesn't matter if you put a microprofile, a Java E, or a UPJAR inside of it. And one important thing to, uh, to remember there is Docker is layered. And that means that for everything you add to this container, uh, uh, if anything changes, it, uh, it, it, it has to, to, to build, build the, uh, rebuild the, the stack of layers. So, so if uh, you change a little bit on your business logic in the top layer, that's usually where you change your code. The other stuff is the same, so that's cached. So the only thing you ship over the wire and, and rebuild your image with is swap the, uh, the uppermost layer. And then it makes sense to, have, uh, to, to, to think about having the container already there, because if you build an Uber jar on this, you'll be swapping your entire application server and everything you need to run your application just because you change some input field in your application, right? But if you have the containerized uh, container approach with, with the microprofile container or the Java E container, you actually swap what you changed. And that's your, your, your thin WAR file on top of that. And that's kilobytes and not megabytes. So if we compare this uh, different uh, uh, kind of, of uh, stuff, if you run the, the microprofile Docker image from Liberty, uh, compared to the, the uh, Java E7 uh, image, the, the microprofile uh, image would be like 200 megs. That's uh, uh, the, the two lower layers in your, your application. Whereas the, the full uh, Java E web profile would be like 237 megs. I think they've slimmed it down with open liberties, like 79 megs or something. So it's, it's, it's uh, significantly smaller now, but, but still it, it's, it's, it's comparable in size. Uh, for Payara, uh, you have the, the, the micro profile 1 to 0 is just 83 megs, um, and, and the micro, uh, which supports the 1 to 1 and 1 to 2, is about 130, and, and the full uh, Java uh, web profile is like 500 megs. They probably have uh, added a little bit too much stuff there, but, but you see, you can slim it down and just use whatever you need for your application. For for Wildfly, it's also uh, uh, for Swarm. It's actually lying a little bit here because uh, uh, you're using the the base JDK8 uh, uh, image. Uh, you can probably s s uh, use a slimmer version of that, and with Jigsaw, you can probably slim it down even more uh, in the future. With Tommy, uh, it's uh, more or less the same, uh, whatever uh, microprofile version of, of the the uh, application server you choose. But to sum up, Microprofile 1 2 is here. It was launched in September uh, this year, so it's about a month old. Uh, try it out, uh, play around with it. There are some good documentation, especially on, on the IBM uh, pages. I think the others are, are catching up. Uh, uh, all, all the implementations support this. Uh, the the um, uh, especially the the uh, the uh, uh, fault tolerance stuff and and the health checks are useful things, um, but all all of this is good for for if you create your microservices. There is another uh, release planned for this year in December. It's one of three. It's uh, gonna uh, support open tracing and open API uh, on top of the the existing ones. There the, there will be a version two next year. It's probably going to support uh, the Java E8 versions of the original uh, specifications like CDI, JSONP, and, and, uh, and JAXRS, uh, and also probably add JSONB. But that's not decided yet. Java E8 was launched uh, in September this year. It has all of these goodies. So if you want to go Java E, this is uh, what you get there. So you, get, you still get a lot of good stuff that you don't get in the microprofile. But what's uh, also interesting, I don't have time to demo it here today, but you can actually add the microprofile config or health or the other specifications on top of a Java E7 application or Java E8. So you can use the full stack Java E with the microprofile added services on it. And th that's also pretty interesting. If you're, if you're creating a, a Java E application, you might as well go there. And remember, 
uh, Docker and Java EE plays very well, well together. And, and remember the layering, it's the only the application layer you're switch, uh, swapping if you're uh, using Java EE or, or a, 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 like an application container. Uh, Docker and MicroProfile works well as well. Uh, you, you can use either the Uber jar approach or the, the container uh, approach. It's up to you. Uh, the uh, JSR 382 is a new JSR in uh, the Java community process, and that is the configuration API from uh, MicroProfile. And this shows how MicroProfile can play along with uh, Java EE. So, so they filed a JSR from MicroProfile project, and this is the first one. And uh, there may be more to follow. That depends on what happens uh, with the transfer to Eclipse for, for uh, Java E and E for J. But uh, as you notice, uh, uh, MicroProfile is an Eclipse project. Uh, e for J is a Eclipse project. They are very not, uh, close together. It's the same people working with it. And uh, I think there will be a very nice synergy between those projects in the future. Uh, whether MicroProfile is going to be a playground for specification into e, uh, uh, E4J later, or if uh, MicroProfile will be included in the E4J, that's up to the future. And that's up to us as a community to decide, and we are, are the ones who are dictating now. These are references. MicroProfile uh, Java EOS, and GitHub uh, will be moved to Eclipse. Check out Eclipse uh, Enterprise for Java on Eclipse. The samples for this presentation is on my GitHub. This is a Duke's microprofile. I also have the microprofile patterns there. So that's what I had. I'm out of time. Thank you very much for listening. And <laughs> remember stickers and uh, please uh, come with questions. And uh, I'm uh, here for the rest of the conference. So, I repeat my question. I want to ask about metric format. So, it is a uh, native uh, format of micro profile or it is Prometheus format because it's uh, like a Prometheus metric from the first look of it. Uh, can you repeat? I'm not sure I got the question. Uh, is it so, you, you expose an endpoint with metrics, yes? And the it is naturally that I want to collect that metrics somewhere to make, for example, uh, pretty dashboards. And okay, uh, you're talking about metrics. Yeah. Okay, this was the uh, Liberty uh, metrics uh, format. I don't think they have specified the format of the metrics uh, in MicroProfile. I'm not sure, actually. I just tried it out today. But uh, tr try it out and, and, uh, and uh, uh, see what you can get out of it. And also, one question. I saw a Fabricate plugin to build the Docker images. Uh, did you find some advantages of this plugin uh, beside of a regular Docker file? Um. I'm not sure. Uh, uh, can we take that afterwards? Thank you.